Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, we are going to be discussing recipes as well as the best profession combos currently for Dragonflight. Now, this is part three of my Dragonflight series, so welcome back to everybody who has been following, and of course, welcome to any new people stopping by. As always, I am just going to throw out a disclaimer right here that I do highly recommend watching the two previous videos if you haven't already. I am going to be assuming that you know the information that are covered in those two videos, which is the basics of crafting as well as specializations and knowledge points, so I'm going to assume that you already have that background info. Also, just as another general disclaimer, this is beta access, things can change, numbers can change, so please take everything that I say, especially numbers specific wise, with a grain of salt. But without further ado, we are going to get started, and I hope you enjoy. So before we dive too deep, let me first explain what exactly is being covered in today's video. The first thing we're going to be discussing is how to unlock recipes and why recipes are so important in this expansion. That seems kind of a little bit lame, people might not understand the importance of this, but we will be covering that in just a second. Also going along with those recipes, then we will start going into the best profession combos and you will see how this ties very close together as we get started. But with that being said, by the end of this video, you should understand the progression of professions, how to unlock recipes, and of course, give you some ideas on how to combo professions if you're still deciding what to work on. And all right, the first thing I'm going to do is just walk you through a little scenario. If you guys are gold makers currently, this is likely something you have experienced before. So let's say you just leveled up a new alt and you want to level up tailoring. It is currently Shadowlands, so you go to Oribos, you find your tailoring trainer, and you pick up tailoring. Then you realize you have to level tailoring all the way up to 100, so you go to a nifty website, you look up Shadowlands tailoring, and that website lists out exactly how many materials you need, as well as the step-by-step -step process to level up your profession. In about 15 minutes, you've bought maybe about 800 cloth, a few vendor items, and then you have officially dinged 100 out of 100, and now your tailoring profession is maxed out. You can go on to craft basically whatever you want, besides a few reputation recipes, and you are maxed out for the rest of the expansion. Now, this specific scenario is probably very familiar to you, and it really corresponds to basically any single expansion. You can do the same thing with Cataclysm, you can do the same thing with Vanilla, you can do the same thing with BFA. However, in Dragonflight, this scenario no longer exists. And this is why we get into the important factors of recipes. So in Dragonflight, you are only going to be able to hit about halfway through your skill level with just trainer learned recipes. So to go back to our scenario we just talked about, imagine doing that same exact thing. However, you're only going to hit about 50 out of 100. And then everything that you have learned is not going to progress you throughout your profession. Now, I will say the exact number that you can progress to and kind of where that soft cap is depends on the profession. For example, Enchanting has their soft cap at about 55 out of 100, while Tailoring has it at about 65 out of 100, and then of course, it varies between other professions. So it's not exactly a 50-50 cut, but you will not be able to hit 100, it is literally impossible. And so this is where the importance of gathering other recipes is super, super important. You guys may be asking, okay, why do you want your skill to be 100 out of 100 anyways? And it is because of specializations, which we talked about last time. In order to have all trees unlocked, in order to basically max out your specialization tree, you have to max out your profession-based skill. So you eventually have to hit 100 out of 100 if you want to max out your specific profession. And of course, it increases your base skill, which will help you a lot when crafting higher quality gear. And this is where we're going to transition into actually how to unlock these other recipes that you need to increase your skill level. So 
There are four main ways to unlock recipes. We have already covered the first one, which is kind of the obvious one, which is the trainer learned recipes. So, you know, you go to your profession trainer. In this case, we were talking about tailoring. So we go to our tailoring trainer, and as we level up tailoring, we will have different recipes that we can pay to learn. Technically, these recipes are considered pretty basic. They're not going to be any high quality gear, but they are going to be very easy to get. Up next, we have specialization recipes. So yet again, this was covered in the second video of this series, but through your specialization trees, you will be able to unlock recipes. For example, if we take a look at the enchanting tree, if you subspec into artistry, you will unlock the profession tool enchant as you continue and continue to learn that spec. This applies to all professions and a handful of recipes, I would say about half of your high-end recipes, comes from your specialization. Up next, we have our most broad category. Technically, you could, you know, honestly make this category into like four different subcategories, but this is kind of your world drops. So depending on the profession, there's some drops that drop from, you know, just random creatures in the world that you come across. Some of them are boss drops tied to the new raid. Some of them are even PvP drops. Um, most specifically, there's like PvP gear, which you can only obtain by winning PvP matches. There are random recipes that come from treasures. There's even recipes that you can obtain from fishing through a random fishing jar that you can pick up and so on. And there's just a lot of miscellaneous recipes that come from, I guess, general world stuff. Now, I will say to calm your guys' nerves, because you just heard me say, uh-oh, did she just say we have to do PvP? Or, uh-oh, do we have to go fish? Or whatever you are worried about, most of these recipes are BOE, meaning you can sell them on the auction house. So if you are a little bit lazy like me, you can choose to pay a little bit of a premium to purchase it off the auction house if you don't want to go farm it yourself. Then lastly, we have our biggest category, which is what we're going to focus in today's video. And this is reputation. Now, technically, you guys have probably heard that we are now using a renown system in Dragonflight. So I'm going to be saying renown and reputation basically throughout this whole entire video, and keep in mind that it is the same thing. A huge misconception whenever people hear renown is that they are assuming the renown system is very similar to current Shadowlands renown, and I would say that is just not true. The renown system is basically just like normal reputation, but of course it is in the visual renown form. So if you hated the renowned system of Shadowlands, that should hopefully put your mind at ease. And so to continue, let's first talk about the six different renowns or reputation factions. We have our four main factions, which is the Dragon Scale Expedition. We have the Tuskar, we have the Centaurs, and then of course we have the Valdraken Accord. These are the four main factions that are tied to each zone, and these will be covering the main storylines that you will be completing. With that being said, there are two sub-factions that you can also gain reputation with. They do not fall under the Renown category, they have their own kind of reputation system, kind of like Venari from the Maw and Shadowlands, if you're familiar with that. And this is the Artisans Consortium, as well as the Cobalt Assembly. Both of these are a little bit lower tier, however, they are still very important in today's discussion. And so, there we go. As you guys can imagine, we now have six factions, and like I said before, patterns and recipes are tied to these six factions. And so, to make this easier for you guys, I have created a little bit of a spreadsheet now this spreadsheet is the sneak peek of my Dragonflight spreadsheet, which will be available to everybody in the near future, but right here, this is the list of reputations. So what I have done is basically listed out the eight primary professions, and I have listed where to gain the renown recipes. So we have been talking about tailoring constantly in this video, so let's use that as our example. As you can see, we kind of have two main professions that are going on here. 
we have a bulk of items coming from the red faction, which according to our key is the Dragon Scale Expedition. And then a huge bulk of our recipes also comes from the Valdraken Accord. We have one recipe coming from the each of the subcategories, which we have the Artisan's Consortium, as well as the Cobalt Assembly Power. So as you can see by this, the required renown, the required reputation for each profession varies quite a bit. There's a common trend, of course, keep in mind these two don't really fall into that, but there's a common trend that you kind of need two primary factions in order to max out. And this is where we're going to transition into the best profession combos. Now, there's a few things I want to cover before we get into that. Up first, there are so many ways to group professions, and none of them are technically wrong. You can do it by efficiency, which we may be talking about in just a second. You can group by things, I like to say, that just make sense. You know, if you are a leather wearer, you will likely have leather working on that character. You know, if you main a goblin, you might want to put engineering on that goblin because it just makes sense, and so on. Then of course, we have the people who like to pair gathering with crafting, so if you are a leather worker, you may have skinning as well on that character, and vice versa. And then the fourth category is, you know, whatever the heck you want. And this is where the huge disclaimer comes in, is that you will likely or possibly not agree with what I'm about to say. There is no wrong combination of professions. So whatever you want to do, you should do that. Like, do not let somebody say, oh, that is a bad idea, or oh, you should never do that. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Whatever you decide to do, at the end of the day, you will be able to unlock everything. So do not take this as you will not be able to max out your profession unless you do this combo. That is just not true. These are strictly suggestions. But with that out of the way, let's just start talking about combinations. Now, keep in mind there are 11 primary professions, meaning to cover all professions, you are going to need six alts. Keep in mind that there is, of course, an odd amount, right? We have 11 professions, so technically there will be one character with a single profession and no pair. You can decide to double up if you want or whatever. And so the first combination that I say is honestly almost a must is grouping your gathering professions together, specifically mining and herbalism. Now I'm going to cover gathering in a future video, but let me just say that the gathering professions physically require gathering in order to earn knowledge points. So last video we talked about how to gain knowledge points, and a big one for gathering is to physically go out there and, you know, gather. So if you have mining and herbalism on the same character, you can effectively do that at the exact same time and work on the professions at the exact same time. This is a model that I like to use, but imagine, keep in mind these are made up numbers, imagine it takes you 10 hours a week in order to max out your gatherable knowledge points. That means if you have mining on one character, you have to go gather for 10 hours, and then you have to go log over to your herbalist, and then yet again, gather for 10 more hours. That's equaling to 20 hours of gathering a week. But Let's say you pair them together. So now as you spend 10 hours gathering mining, you are also spending 10 hours gathering herbs. Now because maybe you're doing it together, it takes you 12 hours in total because there's a little bit of a crossover, but 12 hours is way better than 20. Basically, you become twice as efficient. So that would be my main reason on why you should be grouping your gathering professions together. Now, of course, we do have skinning. Honestly, I would probably put skinning on your, you know, character with only one profession. You can double up with something as you want, but honestly, mining and herbalism is very highly recommended to be grouped together. And this is where we transition into our actual crafting professions. And in today's video, we are going to be highlighting specifically kind of based off these reputations. Now, I should say this right here, because there's kind of a misconception going around as well. Renown is not account-wide. These recipes are character-specific. Meaning, for example, jewel crafting right here, 
that needs the Tuscar reputation, as well as leatherworking that needs it as well. If these two professions are on different characters, let's say your leatherworker is on your monk and your jewel crafter is on your mage, you have to rep grind twice for the same faction. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. We are going to be matching professions based on the reputations that they need, so you can do the least amount of grinding as possible. So up first, I have enchanting as well as inscription paired together. Now the reason why I have done this is as you can see, both of them require all main reps. Now of course, inscription requires the cobalt assembly while enchanting doesn't, but I'm primarily focused on the four main factions. And as you can see, both of them need all of that. Inscription makes sense because you have contracts, which of, of course are tied to each faction, but also you do have a handful of enchants coming from each one as well. So ultimately on your enchanter or on your inscriptionist, so you're gonna have to rep grind every single faction, so you might as well pair it together. Up next, I have paired blacksmithing as well as leatherworking. Kudos to Blizzard, you guys definitely thought about this, but they have made it difficult. As you can see, at most, a profession only shares one common faction with another profession. So they have made this grouping difficult, and likely you will be rep grinding three different factions on each character. But I have paired blacksmithing and leatherworking together. First of all, they are armor professions, which makes life very easy, and they both require centaur and accord rep. With leatherworking, you're only getting like one item from a cord rep, but still you have to get that anyways for blacksmithing, so it makes sense. Now, of course, you will have to end up, you know, farming Tuscar rep anyways, so you are going to be rep grinding for three, but it still matches up pretty well. Also, just a side note, we're not going to discuss it much in today's video, but if we look at profession items, these are the accessories and tools that you can attach. As you can see, blacksmithing and leatherworking share perfectly. Blacksmithing requires two blacksmithing items and one leatherworking item, and then of course the same thing happens for leatherworking. And keep in mind, these items are BOP, so having both professions on the same character means you can craft it for yourself without having to worry about work orders. So yet again, it just matches up perfectly. So moving on, we only have a few more options. And so this is where I have engineering and jewel crafting matched. Now, like I said before, of course it doesn't match up perfectly, but engineering and jewel crafting both share the reputation of the dragon scale expedition. So right then and there, you can max that out but of course, you're going to have to farm rep for the Tuscar, as well as the Centaur. Also, peeking a note at the profession items again, as you can see that jewel crafting and engineering isn't perfect, but jewel crafting does require an engineering item, so it kind of matches up right there, but yet again, it's not as perfect as blacksmithing and leatherworking. And then the final combo that we have is alchemy and tailoring. Now the reason why I have these two paired is for multiple reasons actually. Of course, first they do have similar reputation grinds. Now as you will see, alchemy is a little bit unique, there is not a ton of reputation patterns, and we'll go into that in just one second, but even so, tailoring and alchemy do have some things that overlap. So yes, of course, your alchemist will still have to grind the centaur rep, and of course, your tailorer will still have to grind the expedition rep, but they do overlap with Accord, and they also both require Artisan's Consortium, as well as Cobalt Assembly. So they still do overlap, just not as perfectly. But there is still another main reason on why I have grouped these together, and they both require daily cooldowns. Now, alchemy does not have a ton of reputation recipes because alchemy uses discovery. If you guys are familiar with the mop gladiator gear, where basically you have a daily cooldown of either a piece of cloth or a, you know, piece of leather for leatherworking or a 
bar that you craft for blacksmithing. You craft that every single day and you learn a new armor recipe. That is exactly how alchemy works in Dragonflight. So alchemy, you will be discovering a ton of potions through that daily cooldown. With that being said, tailoring also has a daily cooldown depending on the cloth bolts that you unlock. There is chrono cloth as well as azure weave cloth. As you can see, there's actually bags for them as well, the chrono cloth bag, as well as the azure weave bag right here. But that is a daily cooldown on itself. So having the daily cooldowns on the same character can make your life simple because you only have to log on to it once a day, do your cooldown, and you, you know, it's very easy to remember. And of course, they also do share some reputation. And just to mention it, since we've been talking about the others, Alchemy does require a tailoring piece of gear for their profession equipment, so that does overlap as well. Alchemy itself doesn't craft any equipment, so tailoring is on its own, but that is something to mention as well. And there we go. That is kind of my recommended best combos based on faction and reputation. Now, like I said before, you do not have to do this. For example, I am not dropping any of my professions because if you drop your professions, you will lose your recipes. So I am basically locked in as I have a ton of rare recipes and I have a ton of old world things that I just don't want to lose. But in that case, for example, my main is tailoring and enchanting. So already I am breaking the status quo. I'm already breaking what I just said about alchemy and tailoring and enchanting and inscription because I am, you know, grouping enchanting and tailoring together. So this is mostly focused on people who have yet to learn professions or you're in a place where you don't have a ton of old profession recipes that you can easily drop the profession and forget. But everybody, if you guys have your own personal combos or you guys have any additional questions, let me know. I will try my best to answer in the comments down below and maybe it will be even discussed in a future video. But everybody, as always, thank you so much and have a good day.